Today we're going to react to some of the photos from the new James Webb telescope and then we're going to have a look at maybe what we could do inside of Photoshop if we decided to interpret them a different way and I'll also show you where you can get those images for free. So unless you've been hiding under a rock you know about the James Webb telescope. It's about the size of a tennis court. It's orbiting the earth about a million miles away from earth and the very first images came in this week. The first image revealed publicly was on Monday and let's look at it. So what you're looking here is from the Hubble telescope. This is from the Webb telescope of the same area. So this is just a tiny little snippet of the sky. And to picture the size, take one grain of sand, put it in your hand, put it at arm's length, and then look it up into the sky. That's the size of the segment or the sample that we're looking at here. So there's a lot to explore with this new telescope. So this image is from 4.6 billion years ago, and how did they figure that out? Well, basically light travels at 186,000 miles per second. It takes eight minutes from the light to get from the sun to the earth. So you imagine how far away these particular stars are. These photos are absolutely stunning, like none ever seen before, taken from far away in space. So we couldn't see this with the human eye, not just because of how far away it is, but also because of something known as redshift. Redshift is kind of like the visible equivalent of the Doppler effect. So think of a horn as a car goes rushing by. Sounds something like this. As it's coming towards you, the pitch is higher. As it's going away from you, the pitch drops. Same thing with light. We can see in the visible spectrum of, you know, you've seen Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Right. So as it goes into red, as it goes lower than red, we can't see it anymore. That's infrared. And then ultraviolet is a higher frequency than violet. So we have our visible spectrum. So as it's traveling, those wave lengths are expanding and then we can't see them anymore. And they start to move into the infrared region. So the Hubble telescope captures visible light and ultraviolet and a little bit of infrared. The Webb telescope is mainly infrared. So while we're moving to mirrorless, they're getting massive mirrors. So we're talking a 21 foot mirror, which has the ability to collect six times the amount of light as a Hubble telescope. So it takes about 12 hours for the Webb telescope to capture an image. But this is compared with 200 hours from the Hubble, which might take weeks or maybe even months to collect an image. So if you go to webtelescope.org resource hyphen gallery forward slash images, you can go here and you can find the different images and you can click on them and you can download them. The nice thing about this and also on the NASA page, most of those images are public domain. Of course, this is a collaboration between the Europeans, Canada and NASA to create this telescope, but it's funded by taxpayer money. So, so you are able to grab these and download them, print them out, and enjoy them. So right now I'm gonna show you how I would edit this maybe a little differently. So inside of Photoshop, we're gonna choose the filter and we're gonna grab the camera raw filter. I'm not going to do too much with the color, but what I am going to do is I'm just going to pop the exposure just a little bit. And we don't want to lose the light in here, of course. So we're going to take the highlights. We're going to pull it back a little bit so we can actually see a little more color. Now we're going to open up the shadows. It's going to show a little bit more of the, uh, bit more of the nebula here. I feel like the blacks are really crushed in this particular image. Let's pull them back just a little bit, and we're going to give the whites... Now, I'm going to give the texture a little bit of a push. Now, I don't want to touch clarity or dehaze because I feel like that's going to be a little too artificial. Now, if we feel like we're pushing it too far, what we can do is we can take the contrast and we can pull it back to a more neutral position. And then if we look at the before, this is what they gave us and the after. If you feel like the color is a little too much, then why don't we just pop back the vibrance a little bit? And there we go. I feel like this shows a little bit more detail. We're going to take this image of the Carina Nebula. Now remember, these colors are not necessarily the way the colors really look because the infrared images are actually black and white. They use six filters on there, two red, two green, and two blue filters when they are compositing these images. And a lot of these images are composite of a thousand images that are taken and put together. So obviously the people making these images are the greatest image makers in the world. So I'm not comparing myself to them in any means. We just want to have a little bit of fun here. All right, so let's have some fun with the color. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new layer. And in this new layer, we're going to grab our gradient tool. Let's go into 
the blues. Let's grab something interesting like maybe this one. And we're going to go into our radial gradient. And let's just apply something. Great. Now let's change the blend mode to difference. And apply another one. And let's do another one. And let's try to mix it up a little bit. So we're going to go into the layers again. And this time we're going to change the blend mode to color. All right, so we're getting some interesting colors here. And what I want to do, though, is I'm going to hide this for a second and we're going to grab this one. And why don't we make a selection with it? So we're going to choose the selection. Select subject. All right, so we've made a selection there and let's jump into the layers and it's control J, command J, copy that above it. So let's put that above everything, turn that one back on. So now we're getting the interesting color here happening in the background. And why don't we do the same thing again? Let's create a new layer and we're gonna grab our gradient tool. Let's go into some oranges. And let's go back into our difference mode. And let's start adding some different kind of looking things with the oranges and reds. And let's try some other colors. All right, now we're going to change this to color blend mode. Let's clip it to the layer, hold down the Alt or the Option key. And now we need to soften that area. So let's just make a selection here. We're going to create a layer mask. And then we're going to grab that mask here, double click on it, and we're going to feather it. And see what that does is just kind of softens those edges. Let's pull it all the way in. All right, almost there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this color, I'm going to drop it all the way down and just kind of enhance a little bit of the color that's there. Same with the sky here. Let's take it all the way back. And we're just going to kind of enhance a little bit of the color that's there. Just having some fun. Let's just duplicate the background. Drag it to the top and hide it for now. Okay, there's definitely more we can do with this. Let's take this layer and we're going to hit the Control U for hue saturation. And let's have a look and see what we can do with the color here. So we change the hue and let's see if we can dial in something else that's a bit more interesting. Ooh, I think that's kind of deep and mysterious in there. Kind of like that. And the saturation, of course, will give it more color. Kind of like what we've got there. Let's do something up here. Let's do the same thing. Control U for hue saturation. Now we're up in the sky part. Well, the sky part without the nebula is space. Ooh, look at that. That's kind of cool. Now it's starting to look a little bit like a sci-fi movie. All right, so why don't we grab all these layers. I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to hit the Shift Option Command E. And that's Shift Control Alt E on Windows. So what that does is it combines all the layers into a new layer without flattening them. Let's go into the Camera Raw filter and we're going to use the Camera Raw filter. Let's take the highlights all one way, shadows the other way. Now it's starting to look like something from a Star Wars poster. So for something completely different, there's before, there's after. Now we could blend the two together. Let's take that one on top. And we could take the original and then we're going to change that into a light and blending mode. And if we dial that all the way out there and then start to bring it in, now we're combining some of the colors all right, so there's a different variation, just something a little bit more fantastical. Here's our before, and there's our after. All right, so just super excited about these images coming in. I'm just having a little bit of fun with them. I encourage you to download some, play around, and I'd love to see some of the renditions that you guys come up with these. Let me know in the comments underneath what you think about the new telescope and what you hope it's gonna discover. And if you're new, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, you won't miss any videos from me. And if you like this,
give it a thumbs up, that's a like button, and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.